Sounds good. Um, Next up on our uh, lightning round, <laughs> sorry, is um, Amy Cosera, who is our next Nebraska speaker from the John Neidhart. Did I say that right? Yep, John Neidhart, D. Neidhart State Neidhart. Historic Site. Is, yes, and they have a great research library there, um, and she's going to tell us all about what they do there and the um, resources you can use. So go ahead and take it away, Amy. Great. Thanks again for being patient with me here. Um, Not a problem. Hi, everybody. <laughs> My name is Amy uh, Kutra, and I have been the executive director here at the John G. Neihart State Historic Site in Bancroft since May of 2015. And it really is an honor to have the chance to present um, the information about our research library and our historic site here in Northeast Nebraska with all of you. Um, I'm going to fill you in um, just a little bit about our site and then um, speak about our library and our future um, programs here as um, as we go on. But sure, first we should uh, uh, mention John G. Neihardt, uh, the man whose life and works uh, we house here at the Neihardt State Historic Site. John Neihardt was the Nebraska's Poet Laureate in perpetuity, and this is a two and a half acre site that um, includes Neihardt's historic study an admission-free museum, a research library, the Sacred Hoop Prayer Garden, which was actually designed by Nyhart in 1971, that's out on our grounds, and a number of special events and programs. Uh, the site is open year-round, and we are a branch museum of the Nebraska State Historical Society and operated by the Nyhart Foundation. We have four staff members. We're all part-time employees. It's myself, the executive director. We have an administrative assistant. Um, part-time, we have a part-time librarian and a part-time um, groundskeeper. So we work hard here, and um, the purpose of our site is to educate the public through the legacy of John G. Neihart, who is perhaps best known for his work, Black Elk Speaks, um, but also uh, he published over 40 uh, works and um, was a very accomplished writer. So Neihart himself here in these photos uh, that you can see, um, he actually, I tell folks that I have a lot in common with Neihart myself. Um, uh, he was a graduate of Wayne State College at the time, Wayne Normal School at age 16. Um, I, I taught country school for a short time, and as did my grandma. Um, so we have that in common. Uh, he also worked extensively in Native communities of the areas, uh, documenting the stories and spending a lot of time with the elders from different tribes, and um, I myself also do work part-time as well through the Indian Center in Lincoln, Nebraska through um, documenting uh, endangered indigenous languages. So there's a lot of tie into the work that I do here as well. And then he was also five foot two and, and lived in Bancroft and I am also that tall and, uh, and live in this area. So um, though he was uh, also So it's, dest um, it's just destiny then that you're yes, there. Yes, it is. There's a lot of... Um, um, his one of his autobiographies is Patterns and Coincidences, and I'm I'm seeing a lot of those uh, really very strong. But um, uh, just to kind of summarize, uh, when he was 11 years old, he moved to Wayne, graduated in 18 or at age 16 rather, in 1898, um, and his exposure and his life on the on, on the plains um, previously really inspired his work. And so when he moved to Bancroft in 1900 uh, after graduating from um, Wayne State. He uh, also started working for a trader on the Omaha Reservation here in the area. And then he rented this one-room cabin you can see here, um, uh, uh, which was used as a, uh, as a house, rather, uh, up as a residence until the 60s, um, the 1960s, when it became a, a designated as a historic uh, study on a historic site. So um, uh, his, his early time here at the study and in Bancroft really um, opened him up to uh, a lot of um, acquaintances with Native people and the Plains Indian culture. And it eventually led him to uh, work, or meet rather, uh, the Ogallala Lakota Holy Man Black Elk in 1930. He was here working um, on his epic poem volume, uh, Cycle of the West, and that's when he met Black Elk um, when he was doing research for the ghost dance movement in Pine Ridge. So it's, again, his probably most well-known work, but he's um, got a number. And this, this was uh, restored. Um, it, I'll go on to show some more photos here of, of, of how the shape it was in. Um, and, and this here, these photographs show the interior of the study and we keep it the way it would have been as he used it. And it's the only remaining structure where Neihart either worked or lived that, uh, that does remain. 
Um, right now our library is actually under construction, so we don't have any updated photos uh, uh, at the end of this presentation. I'll provide some links to more photographs. Uh, but we have a museum and a, a library here at the Nyhart uh, Center. Um, that includes uh, a memorial room, which you see uh, is uh, in a sacred hoop design. We also have extensive artifacts um, and displays that have a lot to do uh, that have to do with Nyhart's life and also the cultures of the Great Plains. And um, that kind of segues into uh, talking about our library. Uh, our library is a research library, and a um, majority of our books and our holdings are on loan from the State Historical Society. And we also um, do have a number of um, donated historic photographs, articles, books, and um, information. And also, uh, we have five subject categories, and, um, and those include reference, poetry and prose, biography, American Indian studies, and Western history and Americana. We um, also just have an extensive um, collection of Nyhart-related um, memorabilia, information, and including personal items, uh, such as his desk where he wrote Black Elk Speaks, and a lot of his, um, his own paintings and uh, art uh, events. We also, or rather, art, uh, um, art artifacts, perhaps, uh, this is what I'm looking for. We also do have um, bronze busts of Ben Black Elk, as well as Suzette LaFleche Tibbles. And I'll, I'll, I'll speak a little bit more about um, those uh, and, and our, our other um, really an amazing um, sculpture that we're going to have installed here on our grounds. And that, that will have a lot to do and tie in back with our with our items in our library. Again, Black Elk Speaks was his most popular, uh, well-known work, and um, really how a lot of people identify and know um, who Nyhart is. So we are looking at um, working on curriculum uh, related to Black Elk Speaks in order to invite more people um, to take part of our uh, research here um, and uh, the materials here available to them, and as well as um, use our center as kind of a way to educate folks about all the different cultural um, history of the Great Plains, and especially in this region. And so part of that involves a um, Nyhart Black Elk sculpture that will be installed on our grounds. And um, again, with the connection to um, Nyhart's book Black Elk Speaks, it'll be the 85th anniversary of the publication of that book, and we really hope to tie in and bring more folks in to see that connection um, between uh, the cultures of the plains as uh, through Nyhart, as he was very connected. Um, this is a again a view of our sacred hoot garden of before and after um, imagery. You can see it's changed a lot, and actually Nyhart's study was um, in very much disrepair um, when it was uh, looked to be restored, and um, thankfully the townspeople saw the benefit um, for continuing Nyhart's legacy and creating the Nyhart Center. And through special events is really also how we hope to bring people into our library and, and to um, really um, inspire them to find another interest and, and uh, avenues in, into exploring our collective history. Um, we've also, we're very lucky to, to um, celebrate the Nyhart Day celebration this year, the 50th anniversary. Um, which actually brought together the Nyhart and Black Elk families together for the first time. And it, it was a surprise event. Um, the photographs you see here are um, images of Nyhart's grandson up top and um, Nyhart's uh, granddaughter presenting the bow and arrows that were given from Black Elk to Nyhart and, and they were returned to the Black Elk family. And that was um, Black Elk's great great grandson, Myron. A Poirier that was here for Nyhart Day, and and it was uh, happened to be my first event, so it uh, here at the Nyhart Center. So it was a big, <laughs> big event, and a um, and the photograph down below, you can see the um, granddaughter and grandson of Nyhart on either side of of the great grandson of Black Elk, and um, and there was also a traditional Lakota song 
um, that was written and presented during that event. So we are also uh, very much aware that we are um, perhaps making history here too and uh, is another way for us to start collecting um, more uh, information related to the, the tribes and the cultures of the region. And just another note, um, the site where Black Elk is taken from uh, in his vision from the book Black Elk Speaks, um, there's actually a proposal to change the name of that uh, sacred site for the Lakota to Black Elk Peak. And uh, the Nyhart Center, again below is a photo of his grandson, and, and the Nyhart Center has been kind of um, a new light has been shown on um, our site because of our connection to um, both Ben, Black Elk, and Nyhart. Um, we really also hope to uh, bring in more exhibits and events that are related to um, this cultural um, vibrancy that is in this area, and that includes um, not only exhibits of, of, of that we currently have on display, but also um, connecting those for uh, the exhibits we permanently have on display in our museum, and as well as inviting the public to um, take part firsthand in, in understanding uh, what the symbolism in our museum uh, means and, and, and what a lot of um, history has to offer for all ages and all cultures. And um, so we're proud to be able to do that here and kind of expand to include, um, be more all inclusive to uh, folks with interest in history and literature as well as art and, um, and, and similar um, events. Also notably, we've uh, just received a large donation um, uh, uh, incredible donation rather of photographs you can see here they are um, in a little bit uh, needing or a little bit they do need some uh, repair but a uh, beautiful photograph graphic collection a number of um, photos of uh, Omaha people of the region and because of Nyhart's ties to the Omaha people and also um, it appears to be that these photographs were taken by one of the gentlemen that was a friend of Nyhart. So uh, we have to find out more information, and this is kind of a unique project and another way we can build events and um, invite people in to do research uh, as well here at our library and museum. So this is the Robinson Blackbird Photographic Collection. And again, another tie to this region with the tribal, um, with in relation to tribal people and his connection and their connection with Nyhart includes the sisters, the Omaha sisters, Dr. Susan LaFleche Peacott and her sister Suzette uh, Bright Eyes LaFleche Tibbles, um, very well known in, and actually they uh, lived in and around this area but are buried out at the, the Bancroft Cemetery, includes a number of tribal folks too. So really just providing the information to the public, I think um, as I seen people come in here, uh, a lot of folks do have questions and, and don't realize the rich cultural history we have, and that is related to my heart. Um, some links here uh, of importance are nyheartcenter.org website that's actually in the process of be being updated, and we um, have, uh, we will be working with Wayne State College students and bringing them in and, and updating our website. and. Um, but at, at the time right now, it currently has more photographs as well as um, uh, inviting more people to contribute in, in different ways. Uh, our web presence is kind of new here at the center, and so um, establishing a Facebook page has been very helpful, and we do have one up, so please go there and like us too, and that is our, a way to be able to provide the most up-to-date information at this time. Um, we also have a website through NebraskaHistory.org, um, Nebraska State Historical Society, that has photographs of our former library. Um, again, our current one has been under construction um, throughout this last uh, year, but uh, the construction includes expanding it to have ADA accessible restrooms and facilities, so we're um, proud to be able to accommodate anybody that comes through our doors now. And then finally, the nyheart.unl.edu is a special project that was undertaken by Dr. Pamela Gawson, um, and she uh, and um, a number of students at the University of Texas have um, 
done an incredible project and have digitized all of Nyhart's correspondence, as well as his essays and, and reviews and, and other works. And it's an incredible resource that we are very glad to have and is available to anyone at any time to do um, further research of Nyhart. So I'm going to leave it open if I have any time for questions. Or, um, and please feel free to contact me um, here. We're open um, throughout the summer. Um, in the summer hours, we're open every day. Um, and in the winter hours, we are open only by appointment on weekends. Otherwise, we're open Mondays through Fridays. Great. Thank you very much, Amy. That's really interesting to hear about these historical sites. I love visiting these kind mm -hmm. of things, definitely. Good. 